Grace, mercy, and peace to you in the name of our crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ. For Christ is risen. And yet we can say that with such joy and conviction still. There are times in our lives when we have to realize or when we come to realize that we have no choice but to endure a time of hardship. And in the midst of those moments, we often think or even say, well, let's just hurry up and get this over with whether it's chemotherapy or physical rehab following surgery or planning the funeral of a loved one, the hope of relief drives us to say, let's get this over with. We understand that life is about to get very hard, physically, emotionally, mentally, but we know that we will be better off in the long run. So, no pain, no gain, let's get it done. Jesus knew that he had to face a gauntlet of shame and pain and forsakenness by God himself. He knew that the endurance of that gauntlet would bring about the salvation of the world. He knew that there was a specific time, a date on the calendar that had been circled by the Father for that gauntlet. And his desire was that it would just hurry up and get here. He said, I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how great is my distress until it is accomplished. Here, Jesus is speaking of the bloody baptism of His death on the cross. In that baptism by blood, Jesus will endure the full wrath of God for the sins of the entire world. And by enduring this wrath, He will earn forgiveness, life, and salvation for you and for me. The sooner it started, the sooner it would be finished. So in a way, Jesus was just like many of us. He wished there was a way he could just hurry up and get it over with. On the other hand, there are some very important ways in which Jesus is different in the desire to get it over with. When it comes to us, when it comes to chemo or surgery or physical therapy, each of us receives the gain from our own pain. Blood circulates better. Nerves fire more freely. Cancer goes into remission. We can move more easily with that joint that's been replaced. Here, though, Jesus is different. His pain is your gain. He suffers. You receive the benefit. He forgives your sin. He adopts you into His family. He gives you eternal life in His joyful presence. His eagerness to endure this bloody baptism of the cross is for you. That you would be marked by His cross as one of His own. And at the end of His journey, Jesus kept His appointment with the cross. Enduring the cross. Scorning its shame. And with all of His suffering and with His death, He earned forgiveness for you. You, you can be confident. Confident in that forgiveness because Jesus Himself, at the end of His ordeal, cried out, It is finished. 
He finished His baptism in blood for you. His baptism in blood guarantees that your baptism joins you with Him. His righteous life becomes yours. His holy death, His innocent, bitter suffering and death, washes away your sin. His resurrection is the promise that you will also rise from the dead because His death is the death of death. And His resurrection is the promise of life. You, you will be with Him in eternity in His glory because you are marked by His cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart there at your baptism marking you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified all that He has belongs to you because His pain is your gain you are marked by His cross. Sadly, there are those who reject this gracious gift that Jesus earned with His baptism in blood. And Jesus warned that this would be true. He warned us that there would be those who reject His salvation and take offense at Him. And if they take offense at Him, they will take offense at you because you are marked by His cross. He said, Do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. For from now on in one house there will be five divided, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided father against son, son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Even the strong bond of family will simply break apart over the salvation provided by Jesus Christ. And this division is not God's will. He would have us all bear with one another in love, eager to maintain unity in the bond of peace given us by His Spirit. And yet, there can be no real peace without truth. Jesus said, if you abide in My Word, you are truly My disciples. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So it is Jesus Himself who establishes truth as the source of freedom. It's Jesus who taught that the truth He gives frees us, and it is found only in His Word. And it is in Christ that we have peace. Which then lead, led Martin Luther when he studied the Word of Christ regarding peace and truth to say, peace if possible, truth at all costs. But the devil, the world, and yes, even our own sinful nature, especially our own sinful nature, despise this truth. They despise it because this truth declares that we are fallen sinners. That we are creatures who cannot save ourselves from our sinful condition. That means each and every one of us sins many times each and every day. And that means that each and every one of us have earned for ourselves God's eternal punishment, and we continue to every day. And the truth is, we cannot fix it.
ourselves. And that's terrifying. It's a truth we would rather ignore. Yeah? Just, I'm good. You're good. We're okay. Doing fine. The problem with ignoring truth is that ignoring it doesn't make it go away. Although the truth of our sin is terrifying, ignoring this truth is the most dangerous thing you can do in this life. For when we ignore this truth of our sin, we also ignore the truth of the Gospel. That we are in need of a Savior. And that God in Christ has provided one. The baptism of blood that Jesus endured earned that forgiveness, life, and salvation for you. Oh, the devil, the world, and yes, especially our own sinful nature will do anything to hide this truth from you. That unholy three will label you as divisive and narrow-minded and bigoted and hateful or even racist or pick your label. Go ahead and just slap it right on there. Because the temptation that the devil, the world, and yes, even your own sinful nature want you to surrender to is that you got to get along to have peace. And in that way, they hope to rob you of the truth that saves. That unholy three are trying to create Division. All the while crying out, peace, peace, when there is no peace. They're really trying to create division between you and God. Jesus warned us about the deception of the devil, the world, and our own sinful nature by telling us the truth that peace with God will cause division with the world. God does not cause this division. It is the false doctrine, the false teaching. It is the false word that causes this division. After all, love is love, right? So you just got to let it go. Uh, No. That's not what Jesus said. And as the Holy Spirit inspired Jeremiah to write, as we heard in our Old Testament reading, thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you, filling you with vain hopes. They speak visions of their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. Let me overstate this a little just to make the point exceedingly clear. Although, I'm not really overstating it that much. Everyone, everyone who expresses an opinion about God's truth or peace without speaking the Word of God is a false prophet. Period. Everyone. So when we spout our opinions, well, my God wouldn't. Well, I think that. Well, I feel that. careful. Which is why when your pastors teach the word of truth to you, we continually ask, what does it say? 
What does the text actually say? Jesus was eager to undergo this baptism in blood on the cross in order to unite us with Him. In order to give us His peace. In order to deliver to you His truth that saves. For He desires that all people would come to the knowledge of the truth and be saved. And He has sent His Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, to work through Holy Scripture, to work through that Word of absolution, to work through baptism as He unites you with Christ Himself, to deliver to you Christ in His body and blood in the Lord's Supper, that He might establish in you and maintain in you that faith that receives the peace that passes all human understanding. That guards our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. The truth that Jesus has earned for us forgiveness, life, and salvation that last into eternity for all those who believe who are marked by the cross because they will experience, we will experience the joy of Christ in His presence forever. One, two, three. It still doesn't work. But one day it will because we are marked by His cross. We have life in Him. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Now may the peace that passes understanding guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life eternal. Amen.